Hi. Um, I want to share something with you today. I found a device to calculate the exact time of the rapture. And I've done the calculation and I did a basic graph that denotes the time that it will occur. As you can see, this is history right here. And here are the arms indicating the time of the rapture. The rapture occurs exactly at this point. As you can see, the this hand is very close to lining up with that point. So that's about how much time you have left before the rapture occurs and there's no more chance for salvation except you lose your head. So um, as the graph tells you, you should get saved, seek Jesus, or repent. So there you have it, the exact time of the rapture calculator right in there. We've got about this much time. Not much. I don't know. Is that five days, five minutes, five seconds, five weeks? I don't know. Five months? It's not very much time. Who can tell? It's very close though. So the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is this right here. This is This is your salvation right here. This is the Word of God. You need to read that every day. Spend some time praying, studying it, do word searches in it, and uh, seek the Lord. Um, I'd like to talk on a more serious point about uh, um, some of these, uh, the false prophet issues and stuff like that, where, you know, we need to make sure that we don't treat everybody with a cookie cutter type of thing and uh, we need to love them just like in that dream that God showed me that there was these dogs that were hobbled or hurt some of them had chains on them or all of them had chains on them they were without water so you know some of these people are truly false prophets and some of the people that are following, are following them are just like them but then there are some people that are actually uh, you know, lost because of it. They don't know because they are young Christians. So we need to spend time, you know, working with them. Also, um, I wanted to talk to you about um, salvation and the law. Now, um, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, the last words he said, I believe, were, "It is finished," and then he gave up the ghost. Was he talking about uh, it is finished as in his work, his three years of ministry? Or was he talking about the law? Did he fulfill the law? I say he fulfilled the law in his flesh. He completed it all. So, uh, salvation is a free gift of grace from God to us through the work of his Son. Um, and he did that so that we, he could be inside of us, and with that presence, with us being the temple of the Lord, we could uh, have a closer relationship with him than the law. See, the law would lead you there, it would point to that area of his fulfillment of it, and uh, he wanted us to be able to um, have this spirit of himself inside of us guiding us every day in what we do so that every decision that we make we don't have to look at some written law by some man and say well this is this is what this law says to do or oh, a Gentile built this bridge so I'm a Jew and I'm legally I can legally use that bridge the Gentile built on a Sabbath. See, there's all kinds of laws. There's over 600 and some odd laws. And uh, they were trying to fulfill each and every one of those. And they were there because people wanted to know every little thing. What can I do? How, how should They even have laws about what shoe to put on first in the morning when you get up if you are a strict observer of the law. You put on the left shoe, then you put on the right shoe. And if you don't do that, then you've broken the law. So, Christ came to fulfill that law. He said, it is finished. 
So the work of the law, bringing us to Him, that, that was completed in His body. It's about grace and about love and about forgiveness. And um, any of you that are out there that are listening, you, you really need to think about this because time is very short. And the Lord is going to return. And when He does, those that are left here are going to have to endure some very bad things. Um, so I want to you know, encourage those of you who are believers that love the Lord to really get in His Word and understand it for what it means, you know, what He was trying to say to people, what He was trying to do. You know, why did He pick wheat kernels on the th Sabbath and eat them? And why did He and His disciples not wash their hands? Those, those were all laws. They had to wash their hands and they couldn't do any work on the Sabbath. So, the law goes as far as to show us that you can only walk like, uh, I think it's a quarter of a mile is the furthest you can walk. Um, you're not allowed to turn on a light switch or light a fire, cook a meal, any of these things that would be considered work on the Sabbath. So, um, the Jews use Gentiles now. They have them come over and turn the lights on or they have a you know, control box that will turn their TV on and stuff like that. So there's a lot of good teaching out there by different people that are Messianic Jews that talk about those laws because they kept those laws at one time and then now they've come to know Jesus as a Savior and they put all that stuff away they have a deeper walk with him so you know I what I think is that we need to pray that the Lord would indwell us so deeply that he would be in every single atom that is in our body that make up the cells that are billions of cells that make us up. So we need to have that prayer in our heart that He indwells us like that. We are His temple. And when we do anything, we need to think about that, that respect, you know. The Lord is here with me now when I'm watching this TV show or when I'm doing this or when I'm doing that or this person is doing something that is coming into my eye gate or my ears maybe they're telling a dirty joke whatever it is that's what you have to do you have to think will this offend the Lord who is indwelling me I am his temple this is like having a portable sanctuary going with you you are the temple of the Lord so um, spend time in prayer spend time reading the word I just did a word study on the word season we know we're in the season of his return and uh, pray for Israel uh, there are a lot of things happening uh, that are behind the scenes. I encourage you to go to their news site and see. During the month of March there was over 200 missiles. Rockets came into Israel. They are surrounded. The uh, Gaza area and these other areas, they estimate over 200,000 rockets are in these areas ready to be launched at Israel. Uh, Syria just moved some Scud missiles um, which are aimed at Israel into that area. So. This thing's getting ready to wind down real soon, or wind up however you want to say it. We're going to get ready to rumble. So um, I want to say a prayer for you guys. Uh, may the Lord Jesus bless each and every one of you that are watching this. And I pray that every one of you guys would have the desire, the need to find your way to the Lord, a close way. like. Peter did. Peter walked with the Lord for three years. He even walked on the water, but yet he denied Christ at the time that Jesus needed him most. But Jesus knew this. He said, hey Peter, you're going to deny me, but when, when you are converted, then I want you to feed my sheep. So, you know, we have to have that deep conversion, and that means getting on our knees and praying. So, Lord, help us and guide us into that relationship with you. Give us a heart, a desire to seek your face, God, like we never have sought it before. Uh, that we would run to you in any problem and any difficulty, Lord. And mo most of all, um, we pray that you would uh, have your will in our lives. Jesus said, when you pray, you pray this way. And then he said, and say, not my will but thine be done. Just as he did in the garden, he said, can you let this 
cup pass from me, but not my will, but thine be done. So that is our prayer, Lord, for each and every one of these young Christians and these experienced Christians that are out there watching this, Lord, that, that your will would be done in their lives and that you would help them with their families and with the various difficulties they have, Lord. We each face hard times, Lord, and they're Satan is coming against your children like he never has before. We ask a blessing upon them and we ask that you bind his hands and that you stop him from attacking your people. Those that love you, Lord, we ask a prayer of blessing and protection upon their lives. We ask that you undertake for Israel, for the unsaved there, that you bring salvation to them, O Lord God, and that you help these brothers and sisters with their families God because they really do love their families and we ask that you undertake for them and that you pour out a blessing upon your people in these last days Lord in Jesus name I pray and Father you said your son said that if we ask anything in the name of Jesus that the Lord God the Creator himself would give that to us so I pray it in Jesus name and I ask it in Jesus name that you undertake for these people and you bless them God and for every one of you guys that's out there remember that to love ye one another I know it's hard sometimes and I know people aggravate you they do me too sometimes I say things I shouldn't but we have to understand we're human and we have to love them and help them the Lord's coming there's not much time left you saw the diagram it's scientifically proven.